Christmas Eve is finally here, or maybe for you this year, it's already here. Uh, depends on kind of where we've been this year. Tomorrow is Christmas Day, as a matter of fact, just uh, less than an hour now. And if we haven't already, a lot of us are going to be gathering around tables with family and close friends. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And and at, at our house, as we are, not our house, but as we, we go and, and we celebrate with family tomorrow, we'll, before we cut the, tur- the turkey up or before we put it on our plates there, we'll bow our heads and we'll say a prayer. And, and I'm sure that the prayer will include thanks for the blessings. Also, probably it will include thanks for the gift of God's Son being our Savior. I mean, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our friend. Um, Jesus, uh, the hymn says that. Uh, Jesus is our rock. He's our provider, uh, our protector. And and as you go through, the list goes and continues to go on, and, and they had so many names for Jesus. But tonight, tomorrow, we celebrate the baby Jesus. So the question is, who is, who is your favorite Jesus? Or, or, or rather, maybe better said, what is your aspect of Jesus Christ, the Son of God? What, what aspect do you relate to the most? I mean, sometimes we do pick our favorite image of Jesus and go with that, right? I mean, sometimes if we get angry, we want to see the anger in Jesus. Or if we're being extra loving, we want to see the love in Jesus. Or, you know, how it goes. Ricky Bobby, however... Went downhill fast, didn't it? Yeah. Ricky Bobby, in the movie Talladega Nights, liked to pray to, and let me quote his words, the little eight-pound, six-ounce newborn infant Jesus. That was the one he liked. That's the Jesus he liked. And I suspect that probably most of us like baby Jesus. I mean, Jesus, baby Jesus hasn't spoken difficult teachings to us yet. Baby Jesus has it come to us and asked us to follow him instead of doing what we really want to do. Baby Jesus hasn't said, pick up your cross and follow me. At this point, he hasn't asked us to give up anything at all. So throughout Advent here at each cross, we've been asking the question, what child is this who was born in, in Bethlehem? The wise men said he was the king of kings, or Christ the king. And the angel told Joseph that he is Emmanuel, which means God with us. The angel also told Joseph that he was to name him Jesus because Jesus means Savior, so Jesus will save us from our sins, so his name is Jesus. Old Simeon in the, in the temple, I love the story, the first time they take their newborn baby to church, he's eight days old, and this old guy at the temple grabs him and holds him up in the air and praises God for him. Old Simeon in the temple and the Gospel of John say that Jesus is the light of the world. The angel Gabriel, when he came to Mary, he, he called him the Son of the Most High or the Son of God. But you see, Jesus isn't who we imagine him just who we imagine him to be. And Jesus, Jesus isn't even who we want him to be. Actually, Jesus is who he says he is. Who he says he is. That's who Jesus really is. And see, Jesus knows what we need. He is the Savior that we need. Now, now maybe you don't know that you need a Savior. You think, you know, I'm a pretty good person. I, I attend church reg- occasionally. And, and uh, I give, you know, when I go by that red kettle at this time of the year and they're ringing those bells, I put a couple of dollars in and, and you know, for Salvation Army. So, you know, why do I need a Savior? Well, if you haven't had a bad, enough bad news yet for 2020, let me give you some more. This is it. Are you ready? We're all sinners. That's, the, that's, that's a problem with this world. We're all sinners. We've all sinned. And we have strayed from God's path. We've missed 
the mark that God has called us to, to be on. And, we've, and so when we sin, we break relationship with God and that messes us up. And then we start harming our relationship with our family and our friends. And then we're unable to make atonement for ourselves because we can't just get back right with God in our own. And so we need a Savior. That's what we need, a Savior. We need someone that can forgive us and make us right with God again. That's what we really need in life. And that's really what Christmas is about, Charlie Brown. Of course, God knew we needed a Savior. So God decided to do something different. God decided to do something better. And so God sent His Son to be our Savior and to save us from our sins. Luke says in what we call the Christmas story that, that uh, Linus shared with us this evening, that He came to us in a quiet, in an un unexpected way. Christmas, is, as, as Luke tells us, is about the Lord of Lords, about the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the, the Savior. Let me say it this way. The Savior comes home. You know, we, could, we couldn't get to God, so God got to us in Jesus Christ. And, and He came in this mundane, ordinary family story of having to be born out away from their house because of the tax season and all those things. And it's become a story that we've cherished now as the nativity. So Jesus was born in a stable. And for a crib, you know the story, right? They laid him in a what? A manger. In a manger, which is a feeding trough, by the way. And because there was no room for them in the inn or the guest room, they had to stay in the barn. So... It's a story about a king who was born in humility. He comes in humility, and he comes actually from humble, earthly parents. And so we see this theme of humility that as we continue to read Luke's Christmas story, as he tells us about the angels, and, and it, it continues because as he talks about the angels, he, they made the initial contact or an initial announcement was made to, of Jesus' birth to the shepherds. Now, now, let's talk about shepherds for just a second. Shepherds were uneducated, right? They were the lower class. They lived by low means. They, they were lowest of the low. And you see, shepherds had sheep. <laughs> we expect that, right? Shepherds had sheep, but often shepherds did not have land. Now, you can see, can you see where there might be an issue here? It was irritating because they would come and they would graze their sheep in your front yard. And that was irritating. And then because they worked with sheep all day and even spent the night with them to protect them, these shepherds had this kind of a sheepy aroma. And, you know, honestly, in that day, nobody really cared about shepherds. That was the lowest job, the easiest job to do, the least paid. You just didn't worry about it. You could always find somebody else to be a shepherd. Nobody really cared about the shepherds. But God cared about the shepherds. God cared about the shepherds. So, so Luke tells us that, that the angels brought to these shepherds good tidings of great joy, Linus told us. And this is good news. I mean, this is good news for people who need good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What good news. And here's the thing. This Savior is for all people. He's for you. He's, he's for me. He's our Savior. He's Christ the Lord. And He came for you. He loves you. He knows your name. He calls you to follow him. He calls you to know him. He calls you to give your life to him. He's your savior. You know, that night in the field, the angels gave them a sign. 
Remember the sign he said in Bethlehem, they, he said in Bethlehem, the angel said, you will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, her clothes and lying in a manger. That's the sign. The baby will be in the feed trough. That's the sign. Now remember, the shepherds were the bottom of society, but they were at the top of the guest list for Jesus' very first birthday party. That's pretty exciting, right? God sent the angels to bring the good news to the shepherds because God is concerned about the lowly and those who are pushed down, those who are made to feel small. If you ever have those feelings, remember that God has a, a special place for you. You're first with him. He said it time and again. Over and over again in our lives, God finds a way to bring good news to us when we really, really need good news. And when I think about some of the things that, that many of our, the people in our church are, are currently experiencing, I know that we could all use some good news. We really could. So, so I want you to think about one more thing uh, as, as we get ready to close here in a couple of minutes. Three times Luke tells us that the baby Jesus was laid in a manger after he was born. Now, that's just a little unusual when you look at the style of writing and you do all the historical search. For Luke to say that three times back to back there, it's, it's really unusual. We would expect him to tell us once, and, and it's the kind of detail in that kind of writing that you would think, hmm, cool, you know, a feeding trough. That's nice. He laid him in a feeding trough, and there was no crib for him, and that's a sign of humility. And we check, we've learned that, and we go on to the next thing. So why does Luke tell us three times? There's got to be a reason if you understand the way that, that Gospels were written. Well, so, so think about this for a minute, okay? Where do animals eat? At, at, at the feeding trough, right? They eat there. So think about this. When Jesus fed the 5,000 people on the side of the, of the mountain there, what did he tell him? He told him this. He said, I am the bread of life. I am your food. He says, whoever comes after me or feeds on me will never be hungry again. At the Last Supper, we're going to celebrate communion. This is the first time we've cele celebrated communion in East Cross since March. And I tell you, I've, I've had a chance to do this twice tonight. And I've fallen head over heels in love with Holy Communion all over again. But in that original night when Jesus was at the Last Supper with his disciples, he took the bread and he gave, he blessed it and he gave thanks to God for it, broke it. And what did he say to his disciples? He said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. So, so, so what is the point of the feeding trough, really? You know, here's what I think. See, we are hungry for things. And the only place that we will find those hungers satisfied is here at the manger. At the feeding trough. Where we find Jesus. See, you're hungry to know that life has meaning and purpose. You're hungry to know that you have value and worth, even if your life hasn't worked out like you hoped, and you sometimes feel worthless. I assume we all do that from time to time. You know, you're hungry because you, you're hungry to know that you're never alone and that, that there's someone with you. You're hungry to know that you're loved and forgiven. You're hungry to know that God will give you a second and a third chance. You're hungry to know that when this life is over, there's something more than 2020. You see, we have these hungerings inside, and, and nothing we can buy on Amazon will satisfy them. It just won't. 
So the answer, the, the satisfaction that, that, that we can find for our soul is really found laying in the feed trough in Bethlehem. That's really why we're here tonight. really is. And so tonight, I want to do something. I want to invite you to give your life to the Savior. Now, you may have done this a thousand times as I have time and again. Maybe this will be the very first time that you would ever do that, but I just invite you just to, just maybe in your own way, quietly right now, just to say, yes, Jesus, I need you. I need what Christmas is all about, especially this year. And so once again, or for the first time, God, I choose to follow you. I want to make you the Lord of my life. I, I want you to save me. And maybe we need to say, you save me from myself. The Christmas story. The Christmas story reminds us that God loves us. He loves each and every one of us. He loves you and he can work through you to bring good news to people who really need good news. So when you give your life to serve Jesus and, and to follow Jesus, you become a messenger of hope. You really become, according to the definition, a, an angel. Jesus changes your life. He gives you then the joy of Christmas. That that you're wanting to share and give to another, he gives to you. See, that's really what happened with the shepherds, right? I mean, did you hear what the shepherds did when they left? Verse 20 of that, of that passage said in Luke 2, it says this, the shepherds returned home. Listen to what they were doing. They were glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. You see, that's what we hope for you when you leave tonight. That you will go home praising God. And I know the streets will be quiet. Everything will just be silent. And I hope that you live more than two or three blocks away so you have time to appreciate the silence of the night. And on your way home, I hope that you will sing hallelujah as, as Jacob sang a few minutes ago. You'll sing praises and glory to God. See, we're invited to come and see the baby Jesus. We're invited to come and adore Christ the Lord. And so let us tonight in our hearts bow down and worship him. Let us offer tonight our best gifts to him. And I hope we will take his love out to the hurting world and share the Christmas story that has changed the world forever. It's changed your life and mine. There's somebody that God wants us to share it with.